Hello, everybody. This is Ming Chen. Hi, I'm Mike Zapsik from AMC's Comic Book Man. And you're watching AFK, the AFK show, our favorite show on the planet. One of. One of. One of. One of. So you're, you're, you're watching the right show. Keep watching and keep watching. And keep watching. And keep watching. Don't stop. <laughs> She was a Power Ranger once upon a time. Uh, since then, she did Cabin in the Woods, which is one of my favorite, favorite horror movies of all time, written and directed by Joss Whedon, who is, you know, he gets a kidney. All he has to do is ask for it, and I just have to give it to him at this point. Uh, and then after that, she was in Spartacus. She was in the very last season of Spartacus, uh, which, which I watched diligently. So she's got lots You're of good stories from this. Me? I'm talking about you. This is awkward. <laughs> what? Oh my god. All right, so let's give a big round of applause to Anna Hutchinson. Woo! Yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah. That is your microphone. Thanks for coming. Feel free to let it drop. It just works? It does work. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is Waco Tech. Yeah, hey. All right, so just tell us a bit about yourself and, you know, some stories. And then we're going to open uh, everything up to the crowd. Let you guys ask some questions. Uh, and then I will also ask questions. Okay. I like to ask questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, how do I follow that introduction? Oh, you my gosh. It. Guys, thanks for having me here. It's been a blast so far. Um, so yeah, like you were saying, I did uh, Cabin in the Woods and Spartacus and Power Rangers. But before that, I was in New Zealand and um, did a soap there. Lots of people said, how did you get into acting? In New Zealand, you just audition and then you're kind of done. So that was me. And at the same time, I was kind of doing university and studying Chinese. So I was trying to do all of the things I could. And then I decided that I would just only do acting, which was probably the coolest decision I've ever made. I reckon if you've got a dream, follow that and get it completely annihilated before you start doing other stuff. Um, but yeah, so now I'm in America full time and I love it. It's really, really cool. America. Oh yeah. Uh, so if you've got any questions, ask away, or if you'd like me to start rambling about a certain thing, start up and I will, yeah, I'll keep going. Ramble first. Okay, oh, rambling. The ramble. I don't know, give me a topic. Cabin in the woods. Cabin in the woods. Right. Right. So I was working on this job um, called Underbelly in Australia, and they sent me these fake audition slides for Cabin in the Woods. So I did it. I had no idea. Um, yeah, I knew Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but I wasn't super knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable about it. And I knew about Lost, but I hadn't yet watched it either. So. That's what they kind of advertised it as. They said the dude who created Buffy and a dude who wrote for Lost, they're making this cool thing. They give you these fake sides in this jacuzzi. It was about like this tree molests you. It was really a little bit much, but you're like, okay, this will be fun. So I auditioned for it. The next day I got one note. They said, can you audition again? And then two days later, I was on a plane to Vancouver and I was a little bit tired because that's quite a big flight. You stop in at LA, it's about 15 hours. And um, they're like, all right, Anna, you're gonna go in this van with five guys and they're gonna take a cast of your head. So um, I was just walking down into the basement with these men that I'd never met before. And um, I thought, oh, shivers, I wonder if this is a bit alarming. But it wasn't until my head was cast in the cement that I thought, oh God, this might be my death. Um, so it was a little bit freaky, but then uh, it was kind of, it was all right at the same time. I was in very safe hands and there was a very cool head that got made for when the zombies uh, decapitated me. 
So yeah, that was pretty fun. Uh, it was cool to have Joss as a producer because he was on set the whole time and you could just chat with him. He is so incredible and he was doing so many things. So not only was he um, flying to different universities to lecture, he was also helping us and uh, he had co-written the script with Drew in two days. They went to a hotel, wrote it and then they were done. Like to me, that's an awesome sign of genius for them to be able to reference and kind of throw in that many horror films into one 90 page script or however many pages it was. It was incredible. Um, and then after, so after this all happened and I'd had the coolest time, it really was an amazing five months um, and met Fran, Jesse, Kristen, all those kids, uh, Chris hung out with all of them for uh, a good amount of time. I went back to Australia, watched, I'm from New Zealand, watched Lost and the whole time people had said, okay, you're gonna love season one, season two, but it'll get to a point where you're like, oh no, stop, just stop doing what you're doing. So I watched this whole thing. I loved Lost so, so much. And I emailed Drew afterwards and I was like, dude, I am so sorry that I didn't watch it before I'd met you, but also I'm so thankful that I did because I would have asked him so many questions. Like every day, instead of pashing wolves and getting decapitated by zombies and jumping into lakes, I would have been like, but dude, why did they do this? And why did they invite this wind monster? And why did they put that timer? Like all those things, I would have just been totally off topic and not cabin in the woodsy. So it was kind of the best and he was like, thanks for liking the show and stuff like that. But yeah. Lost stole my heart, but unfortunately I couldn't ask Drew until afterwards. But yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, I'm a Buffy girl, love it. It was like my favorite thing growing up. Did, does, do you have any like stories about Jaws that, that you could share with us that we might not know? Yeah, I got the, um, so I knew that Buffy was totally outrageous and amazing, but I didn't realize how stellar Joss himself was until like, um, his, I didn't realize his fandom until he went to Australia and I was filming a series called Wild Boys at the time there. And he had like a um, Q&A session with him, like a auditorium. I think there were, in my mind, there were about 10 million people in this one auditorium and they asked him questions for maybe, it seemed like seven days, it was only three hours in actuality. But it was then that I realized the amount of love there is for this man. And it was quite incredible. And he deserves it. He is so funny and so smart and I believe truly wonderful at what he does. And he does create a good thing. Like he killed it in uh, the Avengers and stuff like that. And I didn't think, I think I've just wrapped Avengers 2. And I think that'll be just as cool. Age of Ultra. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you've seen Cabin in the Woods, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spoil something for you. In the beginning, all of the five main characters are vibrant, and they all have their own like history and passions or whatever, and then due to some events that happen inside the cabin in the woods, they become like stereotypes. Like, were you comfortable like doing that transition? Did you guys have any trouble doing it? I think it's really fun. When you get given a character, you've just got to absolutely own it. So my one was fun. I never thought in my life that I'd get to do like a uh, music video type scenario. I cannot sing to save myself, seriously. I've been kicked off karaoke stages more times than is even comfortable mentioning. Um, but I, you know when she's doing, Jules is doing that dance in the fireplace, I was like, oh my god, I'm really Spears! It was so much fun. Um, but yeah, so Jules, the way that the um, citizen and Hadley get to her is through her hair dye. So she's kind of, she gets uh, more into it more quickly, into her stereotype because she's already kind of been infiltrated through the dye. I think that's the where it was coming from. So uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. For me, I thought it was great to go from like, yeah, studying Dr. Staff to being an absolute naughty girl. That's a fun little transition to make. So yeah, I thought it was cool. And it was funny to watch Chris's stuff as well, going to the jock. Just uh, this was that one moment where he's like, we gotta stay together. No, let's split up. It just absolutely <laughs> killed me. And it was so much fun because I read it, you know when you're reading something in the script and you just, you just know it's going to be hilarious. And I just remember rewinding it, watching it, rewinding it, watching it because it's just awesome. Very funny. Uh, so how, do, how, does, uh, how does Thor smell? Is that, is that a good question now? Delicious! Question like a Thor creature. Um, yeah, he smells like a big 200 pound man. I think that's what he was going for. Yeah, but he's a wonderful guy. Chris Hemsworth is a dude. We're friends beforehand. Um, Australia's quite a small little place. Um, 
And so everyone's kind of worked with everybody and you kind of hang out, have a few barbecues. And I can remember laughing more than I've ever laughed at his group of mates and him just cracking these funny little jokes. And that's even before Kevin started. So I found out I got the role of Jules through Chris. I was in Australia still filming and he um, called me up and he was like, babe, I'm going to see you in Vancouver in a minute. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you got the role. I was just talking to Drew and Joss. And I was like, what? And then I get a call from my manager. I'm like, hold on, buddy, I gotta take this call. And then my manager's like, um, so, Anna, how do you feel about going to Vancouver? And I was like, dude, I already know. <laughs> so yeah, it was through Mr. Chris that I found out. All right, let's hit Spartacus before we open the floor up for Q&A. Uh, tell us about, you know, you were in the final season of Spartacus. You had a really cool role. Um, so tell us a little bit about how that came about. What was it like being on set um, with those guys? So you asked how Chris smelt, how Thor smelt. Um, I'll tell you how Gladiator smells. Like Amazing. fake tan and a lot of fake mud and blood. Guys, it was sweaty and yucky in there. You kind of, I'd seen a lot of the Spartacus things beforehand. Um, and when I actually got to set, I was really excited about it. I was gonna be like, yeah, all these dudes, it's gonna be so much fun. But it's just rough. Like they're throwing this fake mud and blood at you all day long. You'll sit there. They had a um, wig on me. I was wearing a red wig, which would take about an hour each morning to put on. And then they'd put this gorgeous makeup on you. And then they'd place you in a different seat and start chucking mud at you. And you're like, what are you doing? I could have come in here like this myself. You're just like this dirty, yucky little rebel. So um, it was really, really fun though. When I got, uh, found out I got the role, I was super excited. They were like, watch the first season, second, or the prequel, and then the third, just to find out where things are at. So by the time that I actually got to set in Auckland, I was so, so excited to start and get going. The language that they have there and the scripts and stuff like that were so beautifully written. I think Stephen and all his mates did a uh, wonderful job writing it. It was very, very well done, I think. And just unfortunate that it had to end when it did, because we were having an absolute blast. Yeah. I wanted to say some of the words, but then I see we have kids back there. So oh, yeah. I'm going to avoid talking about Jupiter. <laughs> uh, all right, do we have any questions uh, that we can begin with? All right, Ms. Mr. Sutchin, if you mind coming up front. Oh, okay. Gonna, I don't have that much. No, I can yell. I can project. Oh, okay. Wow. Actor. What is your favorite episode of anything you've ever done? Oh, um. There was one scene, I did the show in Australia called Underbelly, which was really fun, and they had this, um, a dance and a party in this apartment on Bondi Beach, and Bondi's gorgeous, it's in Sydney, but this place was about, probably awesome in the 1960s and hadn't been touched since then. So as we were dancing in the scene, the whole house is creaking, and you're like, shivers, are we gonna go swimming soon? Because no one's wearing their bikinis. Um, but that was really fun. Yes, thanks. <laughs> Great question from Sachin. From PW Smashes 100. Alright, next question. Have I seen you on the 100 before? No. Yeah, oh, never. No. no. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Alright, uh, my question is kind of a two parter. But uh, first question is uh, for the Power Ranger series where you went, did they transition you into like kind of start out, like learn how basic moves and stuff like that? Or if they told you, uh, or your character is based off of certain animals, so we're gonna have to try and create a type of style. And the second question is, where's my pizza? Because Master Swoop still hasn't delivered it in over five years. Are you kidding me? Master Swoop's getting a bit lazy. Um, so what they do with Power Rangers, and I heard about this because I did this um, Disney film called Wendy Wu, and I was working on it with Sally Martin, and Sally Martin had done Ninja Storm, I think she, oh, yep, she'd done Ninja Storm, she's a Blue Ranger there. Um, so she was like, Annie, you've got to do Power Rangers. It's the coolest thing ever. The dude who was directing all our car action stuff in Wendy Wu is this man called Koichi. And she said, Koichi runs this two-week training camp. So you work with the Japanese stunties who, they, when you've donned the lycra, like when you're morphed and you've got the helmet on, it's not you anymore. It's a, um, it's a Japanese boy or girl, just depending on who's available on the day. But you've worked for two weeks to get a little bit more agile and a little bit more um, skilled at these stunts. But you think you're gonna be amazing and you think you're gonna be able to take on the world and if you're in a dark alleyway at 2 a.m., I don't know what you've been doing beforehand, but you think that you'll be able to take on the baddest of the baddies. Well, we were doing a take one day and all that has to happen is Lily basically gets pushed on her bum. So um, I do this and I'm like, don't worry about the stunty, go have some tea or have a coffee, whatever you need to do, I got this. The stunties 
I mean, they are cool, and they are going at, you know how normal speed would be kind of, right? They're going at minus 10 of normal speed, so they're going super slow for me. And they do this thing, and it's like a dance, the choreography, the fight choreography that they give you. They do this uh, kind of push, they don't connect, but I go to full back, and I land on my bum so hard, you know when sometimes you knock the wind out of yourself, and you're kind of like, oh gosh, okay, trying to be cool, trying to be cool. And they're like, oh my gosh, Anna, you're all right. Like, do you want this done? You just step in. And I was like, no, 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 I got this, I got this. I'll save the tears for later, kind of thing. <laughs> so then I try again. Once again, I fall on my bum so much harder this time. I'm like, oh my God, that pain really sucks. I don't know, there was like a funny bone in your kind of, oh, it was the worst. And then anyway, they're like, oh, Anna, they can see the tears kind of spring. And you know, makeup's running. Because they're like, don't ruin that makeup job. Um, and so then I'm like, no, 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 I got this, I got this, it's fine. Third time, finally, I get it. But after that, I was just like, nah, they can, they can take this dance. I don't, I don't do this anymore. Um, until I get to Spartacus. And Spartacus had a gladiator uh, camp, which that was the only thing that I wanted to do. And I was like, please, 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 can I go to this two-week kind of Spartacus intensive camp? I guess maybe in the same way that a mother forgets the pain of birth, I forgot the pain of what these stunties have to do. So I'm just like a fool. Please teach me the ways. Um, and then I get to this uh, thing, I'm saying to my manager, please, 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 please let me do it. They're like, no, Lighter doesn't get involved in any fights. And I was like, what kind of character am I about to play? I don't get in any fights. She's like, no, 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 she's, she's fine. So I went to Hawaii instead and came back super tan. They had to uh, paint white on me. It was so, so weird. Um, and yeah, I was a royal kind of very regal-esque person. So I didn't get to do any of the fights. Thank goodness, because Alan, who played Saxa, was covered in bruises the whole time. Anyone who was involved with any fight got hurt. And uh, sometimes everyone knows Manu, he played Crixus on the show. He was here in March. Oh yeah, good old Manu. He doesn't play pretend. So there was one time where he had to grab me by the throat and wow, they are real tears if you see that scene. Um, he has a grip that is steel-like. And then I was kind of, uh, yeah, that was an interesting scene to shoot. but. Um, so that's that. That's the training that we had for Power Rangers. It was very fun. And I, I can't help you with that pizza, my friend. But I did notice on the way in here, there's a Pied Piper pizza in Waco, which maybe we should give them a call. It didn't look so good in the picture. Uh, Peter Piper, yeah, that's little kids kind of thing. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's awesome? <laughs> yeah. We have about 12 minutes left with her, so who's our next questioner? Right. Josiah, can you project? I need to hear you project. Oh, wow. I haven't seen Hunger Games, but I do think Jennifer Lawrence is amazing and a fantastic actress and a babe. Um, so I don't know what Katniss's accent would be like. I did see um, the one with, I saw Divergent though, with Shailene Woodley. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I can't, but she's bad. I, would she talk a little like this? Oh, she's quite in Fault in the Stars. She's kind of speaks a little husky and American. I can't do it, but yeah. <laughs> okay, come well, on. Thanks. In Captain in the Woods, how did you prepare yourself to seduce that such wolf? Oh, good question, my friend. Um, they, the people in charge of the wolf, they showed me the wolf without the tongue. And then I'm just sitting there and we're all, you know that um, party scene where we're all kind of in the, in the lounge of the cabin or the living room? They kind of shot that over three days. So I think it was maybe the third day that we'd all been in there. Uh, that I actually shot the kiss with the wolf. But on the second day, I was just kind of sitting down, chilling, maybe getting some makeup touch-ups, um, and this guy brings over this rubber long thing, and uh, it looks weird. And I'm like, wait, hey, dude, what are you doing? Kind of thing. He goes, Anna, Anna, this is the tongue you're going to be kissing. Uh, we've coated it in sugar, so if you want, like, I don't know if you're into that. And I was just like, <laughs> are you into that? I, I like candy, um, but that's a treat. So anyway, we shot that scene, you know how everyone will always say, you guys probably know, for any like one minute of TV, 
you're shooting that for about maybe two hours, three hours in actual life because they do lots of different shots and stuff like this. For three hours, I was licking this sugar-coated tongue. So imagine how hyper I was at the end of that. I was just running up and down walls. There's this bit where Jules jumps over the couch and she lands just before she does the walk. So we'd already done the kiss scene. Then we do this jump. I catapulted so high that I totally missed the couch. So I couldn't put my hand on it. I go, whoa, boom, landed on my neck. And I was just like far out on seeing stars. It was crazy. And everyone's rushing over, get a medic, get a medic. Oh my God, Anna, are you okay? And I kind of just pop up and someone yells out, that was so faulty towers. And I was just like, did you get it on camera? And they were like, yeah, yeah, we're recording. And I was like, okay, that's all good. But yeah, so I was so souped up on the sugar that they had placed on that tongue. That's how they got me into it. And yeah, but man, it hurt. It was it, the neck. It's still kind of clicky. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> Worth it. All right. Next question. Oh. What would be your advice to an aspiring actress? My advice to an aspiring one, or even one that's kind of done heaps of stuff, is just keep going. So do whatever you want to do. It's fantastic nowadays because you can film heaps of your stuff and you've got heaps of platforms to show your wear, whether it be little cute things on Instagram or you know how they can have like 12 seconds or so. Um, YouTube, you can have YouTube channels, or you can just start creating your own web series. So if you don't have an outlet like an agent or a manager, just start doing it yourself. And um, just watch as many films as you can, uh, get into it as much as you can and just keep going believe in yourself because at the end of the day You've pretty much got you and I think that this applies for any job that anybody's in If you believe that you can do it and you've got the goods Then you will be able to and you, but man, you've got to have some undying belief I tell you you can go in for a hundred auditions and I'm not overestimating there I know that I was talking about like seven hours and seven million and ten million before I seriously mean you may only get um, one yes for 99 no's so you're the one that's got to pull yourself out of that thing where no is dumb and you've got to kind of just go okay I can make it like it's all right it's gonna be worth it I kind of um, similarize it to being a gambler uh, in a casino you can be down to your last five dollars in the casino and then suddenly your five dollars hits but you might be like oh, I'm gonna go after this five dollars I'm going home I'm going home but then you hit and then you make like $30 and you're like, oh, I'm gonna stay. So in the same way that you might have gotten your 99 no's, but then you get that one yes and you're like, okay, it's all worth it. And it really does make it, okay, so just keep going. But it's it's tricky, there's a lot of competition because it is a fabulous job when you're working. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right, El Mariachi, another question. Uh, after you made out with that moose and everybody applauded, uh, was that in the script or was that just like improv? I think we did have a hilarious time. I probably. No. Um, we did. I think that their reaction afterwards, like, what the? Was that the improv? Was that just like, we clap and everybody just clap? Everyone loves a slow clap. There was just such a cool vibe there, and Drew is really responsive to anything that's going on. He's an awesome, awesome director. So um, when they were kind of just yeah, clapping, and he, yeah, and even down in the cellar and stuff like that, when we'd find little things, and um, when Fran and uh, Kristen are kind of talking about the books and stuff like that, the words were very precise, the um, script itself, and I think that there was no room for kind of edits or additions because you don't have to if something's as brilliant as what they made you don't need to kind of add in your own stuff but drew was kind of i know what drew did add just at the end of the kiss jill says thank you to the moose and um drew was like oh you know blah 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 thank you kind of thing and so that was added but i'm pretty sure i don't know the dudes might have just clapped i just bowed just to there was a gymnast performance, I think. You know, like when you're just, you're like, okay, I'm done, I'm good, yes, kind of thing. That was an edit. <laughs> cool. Did you get to keep the wolf? No, I would have liked to keep the head. I think the head's on sale, my um, cast of my head. I think that's on sale uh, on eBay. I've seen like a picture of it. So that I would have liked to have kept. But I'm not. Um, much of a keeper. If you're an actor, often you just kind of travel all around the world. So I was kept to like this 50 pound bag for about six years. So there was no room for anything. And one thing that I would have really liked to have kept was the My Cabin in the Woods script. Uh, MGM at the time had the film. 
and I said, oh, this is so cool, Joss. I've always wanted something with the lion because you know how that lion you just know from that roaring lion. Um, and so he was like, oh, okay. So I went away to maybe get some water and I come back and Drew's drawn, uh, Joss has drawn this awesome lion on the front, like an MGM thing. And I'm like, such a dick. I can't believe that I didn't take that with me. But anyway, yeah. All right, do we have any more questions? Oh my gosh, the tank was crazy. It gave me an absolute, like I really respect what Marines do anyway and how they fight for their country and stuff like this. But we went out on a, a football field. Mitch gave me a ride. And that's bumpy. So I cannot, uh, even now, knowing a little bit what it's like, I can't comprehend how that would be having, being in uh, terrain, having people maybe to the viewer stuff like that. So that was that was pretty insightful. And I saw you with the gear thing. You were waving. They couldn't know. I don't know what happened. But I wanted to know what, what happened and how was it. Yeah, I, th I think more than anything, like it's really fun to have a fun ride and stuff. And I did have a deep respect for anyone that fights for their country, but it gave me even more respect for sure. Absolutely. And then our last question. Hi, Michael. Uh, okay, so one question for you uh, for Power Rangers. Um, did you or your cast members play any pranks on each other on, on Zoom and set? Um, I think you're just always joking around with each other. Uh, but no, not crazy. Some of the other rangers, they talk about the pranks that they played on each other and stuff like this. I don't really think so. One of the majorest pranks that ever happened and it was just totally, and this isn't even in Power Rangers, this wasn't in Cat in the Woods, was um, we were all filming at a lake and we were just waiting for one of the girls to get ready. And they had a jacuzzi there because the lake was really cold and stuff. But Fran decided to go on a run around the lake with the um, people watching him. And this is like nature playing a prank on you. This black bear is standing in the middle of his way. <laughs> and he's just like, shit, this. The people who are filming the behind the scenes footage, they're with him because they're going on this run with him. And he's just, you just see this dude, blonde hair, running, running, stopping, and then it just kind of going to this black bear. And you're just like, oh, dude. And then Fran's just like, hold up. So that's kind of like the most, um, but yeah, that's that's nature playing a prank. Awesome. Yeah, I don't, you can't beat nature for that kind of stuff. Well, all right, let's give Miss Anna a big round of applause. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming out, everybody. I really appreciate it. And Waco is awesome. I'm having such a blast here. She's going to be doing autographs for a little while. She's got to leave soon, so if you want to get one, you got to catch her now. Uh, the PopCon is moving uh, March 20th through the 22nd to the Coliseum. You guys can come back. We have confirmed the WWE's Goldberg, Woo! the wrestler. Uh, it'll be really awesome. I can't wait to see you guys there. Uh, and alrighty. See you soon. Thank you.